So hello everyone from Green Mopeds in London. So today we're going to follow up on our ride review of the Evoke Urban Classic with a static review and we've put it next to the Evoke Urban S which is the other bike in the urban range from Evoke Motorcycles and we're going to do what we normally do which is go around the bike, talk about it, show you some of the features and hopefully that will help you make an informed decision. So let's get to it. Okay so just to talk a little bit about Evoke Motorcycles. Um, According to their website, they are headquarters in Hong Kong and their R&D is in Beijing. Um, however, we were contacted after we did the ride review and were told that they're not actually Chinese, but they're American. So um, take that as you will. If you read the website, it's Hong Kong. So um, to talk about these two bikes, uh, they are the two bikes in the urban range. There are also, there is also a range called the 6061 range, which are more powerful still. Uh, they're talking about $20,000 for one of those bikes. So you're sort of getting up into, you know, high end zero, um, sort of touching on the sort of doors of uh, Energica and Harley Davidson and all that sort of stuff. Um, no idea whether that they are going to come here as well as, these as this series, but uh, they're looking at sort of 2022 to be coming to the UK under a new importer. Okay, so they were here before, uh, but that importer decided not to carry on with them or start taking them, I think. And now they're on the, a different importer. Okay, so these two bikes uh, from the spec sheets look uh, technically similar. Uh, obviously the design is a little bit different. So this one, the S is a bit more sporty. Uh, this one, a uh, more classic look as you look at the seats, for example, you know, you've got this um, patchwork uh, leather uh, seat versus the straight, uh, the standard seat. Um, handlebars, you've got the handlebar mirrors here. Here you've got standard handlebar, uh, standard mirrors. Okay, stuff like that. But essentially, these bikes are similar, as you'll see as we go around. Okay, so <clears throat> the bike is, I guess, the first thing to start at is actually on the battery. So it's a fixed battery, as you can see. It's in from here, pretty much all the way. To the top but what that means is it's 102 amp hours okay so and 7.6 kilowatt hours now if you compare that to something like a tc max uh, which is over in the background over there um, it's about three times the output in terms of range and, and power output as a tc max okay a, a tc max is about uh, 2.6 i think okay so you've got a lot more in the battery in one of these bikes than pretty much most of the other bikes that we do. Um, however, one of the things that is different about this uh, bike is that the cells are not 18650s. So 18650 is sort of like the standard for these sorts of bikes to have. Uh, they are the sort of little two volt batteries that you get, uh, rechargeable batteries that you get, but there's just lots of them. These ones have, have changed to prismatic batteries. Prismatic batteries are more well, they're rectangular, so they're not round. Um, but what Evoke is saying is that it allows them to give up to a 50% longer life than an equivalent 18650. Okay, so they've chosen that. Um, some would argue that uh, 18650s are more of the way to go, but you will find prismatic batteries in vehicles, other vehicles, cars, and things like that. So I wouldn't necessarily be put off by that, but it's just to say that it isn't 18650s, okay? Um, the other thing that's interesting about this bike versus other bikes that are up there in this sort of power category and what we're talking about is maximum of 20 kilowatts. So maximum 20 kilowatts um, is, you know, four times the maximum power of a TC Max, for example, three times the maximum power of a, a CR6 from Horwin. OK, um, but the interesting thing about comparing it to both of those bikes is you, you're still with a hub motor. OK. So usually, or often, uh, when you get to more powerful bikes, you move to a centrally mounted motor with a chain or a belt. So the TC Max and the CR6 both have a centrally mounted motor. One has a chain in the CR6, one has a belt in the TC Max, okay? But here, they've managed to develop their own uh, 20 kilowatt max hub motor. Okay, so why is that? It, important well obviously if it's centri if it's centrally mounted with a chain and a belt then that chain and belt uh, give away energy so in the transmission of power 
So you would think that this has more uh, efficiency in terms of what you actually get at the wheel that's taken out of the battery in terms of power. Um, less maintenance because it's, you know, everything's in there. There's no moving parts within the wheel itself. Here you can see the actual cables going into it. Okay, so literally you're taking some of that uh, power from the battery and feeding it directly into that hub motor. Okay, um, however, what you are also getting is the fact that you've put a bit of weight into that back wheel. Okay, so obviously with a centrally mounted motor, that weight is more to the front. But here we've got um, the motor actually hanging off the back wheel. If you actually look at the width of this or measured it, you would see that it's 17 centimeters across. Okay, that means six inches in sort of old money, um, which means and totally explains why this wheel at the back is so wide. Okay, um, the reason being that you've got to make the wheel big enough to take the motor. It's as simple as that. It's not necessary that they've over manufactured it or over specced it. It's the fact that they have to do that just to fit the wheel, uh, the motor into that wheel. Okay, so that's one thing to talk about. The other thing is actually about brakes. So here you see you've got big dual front discs. Okay, both sides, same on here. But what you normally have on a 125 or what you have to have on a 125cc equivalent license, which this is, is CBS. In other words, you squeeze one lever and front and back brakes both slow the bike down. It's either CBS or ABS. That's what the rules are for a 125cc bike. Okay, here you see only one lead coming into the front caliper. So you say, oh, no CBS. But look at this, two, going into the rear caliper. So they're saying that this is CBS. It looks like CBS to me. So what you're doing is CBS has been moved, as far as I can tell, I think to the foot brake. I think, it I might be mistaken, it's a bit hard to tell, but it's certainly when you press that foot, when you press the foot brake, it certainly slows you down a lot quicker than just using the front brake. Okay, so I think this is and I've asked a few people if they recognize this, but this to me looks like CBS off the back wheel, which I haven't seen before. Okay, normally you get two feeds coming out of the front caliper. Okay, so interesting that they've managed to put in CBS and have it coming off the rear wheel. If that's, in, that's all I can explain these two things uh, in doing. Okay, so it is, legal from a CBS point of view because you have to have um, front and rear brakes going together um, and then you've got some other innovation um, around the front of the bike which is obviously you only have one chamber because the other chamber has been moved down here okay so this is your brake uh, fluid chamber the stuff that you fill up with dot three dot four and all that um, says dot three that you might just be able to see that okay so that's the uh, brake fluid for the rear brake CBS etc etc okay so going around the bike it is quite heavy 179 kilos okay so that is um, prob well it's about just under two TC maxes <laughs> Okay, but it can still carry uh, 200 kilos of weight. As you can see, it's got the pegs and all that. It's got a seat and here's the passenger seat. Um, there is some talk of storage underneath here. It's hardly worth you showing it, me showing it to you rather. Um, if you go underneath here, here you go. So disc lock, I guess is all you could get into that. All right, okay, so that's that. Um, I presume there's no storage underneath here because the battery comes so far up. Uh, on a CL6, for example, you would still manage to get some storage underneath this tank, but not on this. Okay. <clears throat> if we look at the dash, I guess one thing that might have been not being clear on the ride review was the dash because uh, the light was so so bright. I guess um, 
and this is probably something that they could possibly beef up or make bigger. I mean, it's relatively small, this display. If, if you zoom out, you'll sort of see that. Okay, but here you've got your battery charge. Here you will have amps being drawn, and here you will have, uh, when you have regen going, it will feed into the um, brake system to top up the battery. Okay, they're saying about 15% regen, and it was pretty aggressive. If you saw the... Uh, ride review um, when I came off the A3 and I literally just released the throttle see uh, regen kicked in okay straight away and that is the coasting sort of regen not the where you pull the brake and you get regen okay so it was fairly aggressive that might take a bit of getting used to okay because normally on these bikes you sort of twist and let go of the throttle and coast but here you probably have to think about that a little bit more because as I say it was fairly aggressive it knocked me down from 50 to 40 to 30 almost in that sort of time okay but anyway so here you have um, a warning that says the kickstand's down which is fine it's in city mode so it has two modes and on the uh, ride review we got city mode was getting us to over 50 55 miles an hour thereabouts okay and then uh, pro mode got us to well we stopped accelerating at 70 but it's supposed to go to 80 okay miles an hour that is okay um, around the dash you've got you know your mirrors on the end of the handlebars as I said during the ride review with gloves on you could possibly catch this mirror when you're reaching for the brake lever um, but other than that it's fine um, here you've got your kill switch to disable the throttle, you've got lights, and that's the uh, mode switch, as in to go from city to pro mode. And on this side you've got standard stuff, okay, F flashing light, uh, head beams, and then the indicators, which um, unfortunately are silent, but you can't have everything, I guess. All right, um, in terms of sort of novelty things, uh, no alarm. Uh, no app uh, they do talk about firmware upgrade so you can actually you know uh, improve the performance of this if they've noticed some software that they can improve to actually uh, get this thing to go further on the battery um, when we talk about the battery again there is a bit of interesting compared to other bikes that we've got we have this charger okay so this is the uh, 5t2 type charging um, you can also charge it through uh, obviously a, a standard plug if you had the adapter on the end of the lead which uh, they did provide here and they're saying 60 minutes to take you from 30 to 80 percent charge okay so that isn't that bad uh, these days um, that's I guess pretty standard for T2 type charging. It will take obviously longer if you then plug it into, plug it back into a 13 amp charger though, of course, uh, because you've got less power going into it. Okay, so um, that's pretty much it. I mean, the prices of these bikes is to be determined. They are going to go on the grant, uh, which will give you the three year warranty on the battery and the two year warranty on the bike itself. Um, according to the Evoke website, the S, the one on the right, is cheaper than the one on the left, the Classic. Uh, we'll see if that flows through when they come over here. Uh, colours on the Classic are red, this blue, and then a black, and which will be that black. Okay, so estimated price is going to be probably about seven, seven odd thousand pounds after the grant. Okay, and bearing in mind the grant will be about fifteen hundred pounds off of that, so it's possibly going to be around eight and a half thousand RRP. But you're getting a bike that goes eighty miles an hour. Uh, ranges are sort of fanciful ranges, I would say, are two hundred kilometres, which is what it says on the uh, spec sheet. Uh, but they also claim a hundred miles on mixed mode uh, with a seventy-five kilo person in twenty-five degrees C. So again, I would imagine that's fairly ambitious, even with 7.2 kilowatt hour batteries. Um, if you get over 60, I would think you're on a good thing. Okay, so I think that's everything. Um, you won't be able to test ride this from us until they come back uh, probably in the new year. But uh, if you have any questions, then please feel free to contact us. Um, if you have, um, want to put down a deposit for one when it's coming over, then we can do that as well. And hopefully that was useful and please subscribe to our YouTube channel and thanks very much.